Hello, welcome, this is Johnson Vars. In this video I'm going to talk about the plot unfolding machine and perhaps the scene unfolding machine as well. Um, I am making a new video because the last one is a bit old and it was not so good to be honest, in my opinion, of course. Um, so let's get started. What is it? The plot unfolding machine is a set of rules available on each I.O. for free, although donations are very welcome, and that let you play a solo RPG, basically without a GM, or play with a friend without a GM. Um, how does it work? Well, you are a bit of the GM and the player, of course. You create, you choose your RPG of choice, your setting, your theme, um, set up the plot hook, create the characters, and so on. But the plot unfolding machine lifts some of that heavy GM side effort, let's say, to put it simply. So once you get the PDF, you're going to get the rules of how to play. The rules are very lightweight, it's mostly or basically use however you like. But the idea is that you play in scenes, basically um, pieces of game uh, in which uh, your character take action to achieve what they want to do. So technically you just set up a scene of what you expect to happen next based on what your characters want to do next. Um, but it can help you set up those scenes, um, tweaking them, giving you ideas uh, for your characters to do things, right? Because usually you get a plot hook like, for example, go and rescue the prince. Um, but it's up to you normally if you play without the gym or solo it's up to you what what do you fight in between or how things unfold right so plot unfolding machine helps that it helps with unfolding that plot hook of yours so basically what you need is an rpg your characters an adventure plot hook uh, some mood make sure you play your favorite music and so on and just print the last two pages uh, basically it's one page in total on both sides it's made of two parts, um, the scene setup page and the oracles. Um, basically the scene setup helps you design cool things for your characters to do, ways to challenge your PCs or what challenges your PCs. And second is oracles, in case you have questions to the GM emulator, which is what it is, um, you can get straight answers. So I'm gonna put some examples. Um, first, is let's take a look at the scene setup, which is the PUM biggest feature. Um, basically, you're, let's say you're playing um, some characters and they are looking for some uh, gang in the city, right? And in some cases, when you're playing alone, the RPG of your choice, um, you might get stuck, like, hmm, what, what happens next, right? Well, first you have to think what you, you would your PCs do about that. Let's say you have an investigator and maybe, I don't know, a medic, a few characters, one, two, three, how many you prefer. And then you think, okay, what would they do next? Okay, there are two possible scenarios. One is your characters know exactly what to do and what they expect. And a good example for that is, okay, they go and visit Uncle Charlie to ask him a few questions and they know Uncle Charlie works on the bar and uh, they know where to find him, right? So that's the next scene. That's basically an expectation. Um, and what you want to do, what Plot and Folly Machine proposes, is that you check it out. Why? Well, because you're not driving the game, right? You're not writing a story. You just say what your characters want to do. Okay, so for example, they go and visit Uncle Charlie. Now what we need to do is, since we have an expectation, we imagine the scene like entering the bar and we expect Uncle Charlie, the PCs get down the car and so on. Okay, do things happen as we thought they would? That means, is there any surprise in this attempt? Then you would come here, expectation checker, and draw the 10. Let's say you get a 7, 7 says happens as expected. This means your PCs go uh, perhaps by car and they arrive to the bar and you can proceed to play that scene of entering the bar and Uncle Charlie is there, as you thought, and then you, you talk to him, right? Whatever you wanted to ask him. Hey, do, do, do you know where the gangs are, etc. Let's give another scenario. Let's say Uncle Charlie says that the gang has been last seen in some sewers and he points out which ones, right? 
our PCs eventually go to that, to those sewers. Uh, going to those sewers, for example, is an expectation check. So you can even check if your PCs arrive to the sewers, um, like or or if something gets on on between, right? Um, so you can also roll another check. Um, you get. In this case a 4, a 4 says again happens as expected, this means nothing interrupts your PCs on your way there. Uh, of course, you only check if there is such a risk, right? If, if the game just started, you don't have to check every single thing. But when there's a small chance that someone spied on your PCs, and uh, things might get nasty, uh, expectation check is a great thing uh, to see if your PCs get where they want to go. Now. What happens if you enter those sewers? What's on the other side? Okay, you open the door, is the, is, is the door open? Perhaps you can start asking questions to the oracles, which you should. You get to the sewers, is it easy to access the sewers, right? And there's a yes or no oracle, so it's a D, 2D10. Uh, so you roll 2D10, you get 7 and 8. 7 stands for yes, and 8 is and. So yes, it's easy and actually very visible so your PCs don't have any issue. Um, I don't think the, the place where Uncle Charlie pointed out, and it's actually open. Is that normal? Maybe your PCs wonder if there is recent activity or not. They roll their perception checks. Remember, you're playing an RPG. Um, if you succeed, you can ask, are there any, any trails of someone? Then you ask the Oracle, right? Uh, this is a six and a nine, that would be no, there's no signs of activity. Nine is unless. There's no signs of activity unless, unless they were cleared out recently, for example. And what I'm doing implicitly is interpreting things. I am making things out as I go, but plot and folding machine takes a heavy lifting of, of me, right? Um, we can ask from our PC's point of view, is there anyone in there, right? I don't know, near the entrance, and you roll again 2d10 and you get 1 is don't know, 2 is for now. So you don't know if there's anyone there, that means, I mean, that you interpret as you prefer. To me that means we don't know if there's anyone, at least we don't see anyone at the moment, right? So it's up to you how you read this, uh, plot and the machine, Oracle is not um, deterministic, so you might get don't know or hard to say. Your PCs might need to move a bit to, to get the answers they want, right? Okay, let's continue to the scene example. That was the scene of figuring out where the sewer was. Let's say they enter and you have no idea what's on the other side. Uh, your characters uh, move the sewer tape to the side and they basically climb down the stairs. But what's there? What's going on? Since I don't know, I need a scene prompt. Basically, I need plot on filling machine as if it were the GM to tell me what's, what's going on uh, as, as we enter, right? Because if you play Mythic or other uh, Game Master emulators, uh, it's, it's not wrong, by the way, it's a preference. You have to think that. You say, okay, there is, uh, I don't know, a pack of rats or there is a smell or there is a trap and you have to propose those things. But Blood on Folding Machine has a scene prompt, means uh, you can go without any expectation. Let's try it out. It's a 1d10. Um, I roll and I get a 10. 10 stands for there's a trouble circumstance and there's a dice icon here. That means I need to go to the scene designer tables and there's probably a circumstance table because that's what it refers to. There's a circumstance. Let's roll the 20 for that. We get a 20 that stands for there's presence of invisible forces or powers, right? So the scene is all about a situation in which there's presence of invisible forces. That's up to your setting. For example, if you're playing Tulu, it could be that there's a spirit. Or if you're playing something realistic, perhaps there are cameras uh, watching or if you're playing fantasy, um, it could be some invisible monster. Up to you, but it gives you a lead. What's the scene about? You can also voluntarily go to the tables by yourself. Um, why? Well, let's say you are really not sure. It's, this is not 
enough for me. You need to know what tables you have available because that's how plot and folding machine works. You need to know when to use these tables. So let's say um, I know there is presence of invisible forces, right? But I don't know how exactly my PCs are going to be challenged. So I can roll a d20 for this other uh, and call on this challenge table because I want to know how my PCs are going to be tested. Six stands for something hidden hard to perceive. So then this is reinforcing the conception that it's all about appealing, something that might spot. Is it still not enough? No problem. You can uh, roll a catalyst or roll uh, a complication. What's the problem? Ideally, you don't want to roll that much. Like try to pick it up from here two times maximum and go on with it. So I would imagine, um, let's say I'm playing realistic. So it's all about some very well camouflaged cameras that my hacker might spot, my detective can uh, find uh, when he's using, I don't know, night vision or his uh, flashlight. So it gives you ideas for the scene. Let's roll for another example. Let's roll back and say, okay, we're entering the sewers. Let's give, let's take a look at what else can happen. Could it have been? Six stands for a social related encounter. That means there is someone, right? What do you do with that? Um, again, you can go to the oracles and start asking questions. Who is that? There's an oracle for who, for what, for intent, for activity, for reasons. So you can ask, what are they doing? Or who is that? Let's say who, who? that's a 2d10. Um, who do we see, right? Four and six stands for an old person. There's an old man in there sitting down. Does he perceive us? We can roll a yes or no question. Two and three stands hard to say, but it's hard to say, but he seems to be awake. Right, this is what I'm coming with, the interpretation. You see, the plot unfolding machine helps me a lot. Is, is, is he doing anything right now? We can check again. Seven and six, yes, he's doing something. Then we can say, okay, what is he doing? What is his activity? Uh, it's another d10, two d10, that's four and one. He's preparing some business. So you see an old man, you're not sure if they perceived you, but they seem to be working on a table preparing some briefcase right and then you go from there that's the scene you approach him you talk to him what does he want does he attack um, you can even describe the person like with this 2d10 here um, you can describe him 10 and 2 stands for incredibly clever so this guy maybe he's playing silly right um, he tries to hide he tries to run it's up to you how you read these things, but as you can see, the folding machine is gonna give you a lot of prompts. What if you talk to him and he reveals something, like you persuade him to, to, to share some info. If, you're, if you don't have any clue about what you can learn up from him, let's say, okay, what I make the man talk and uh, my PCs are very charismatic and he, we ask him to tell us something about the gang that's on, that, on those sewers. And we don't know exactly what we will learn. Then we go to the discovery check. It's a d10. And we get a 4. A 4 says a new way of solving a thread. What does that mean? Well, again, it's up to you. It could be that the gangs are not really from those sewers, but they are from elsewhere. So there's another way of reaching out to them. Um, that is a bit of practice, your interpretation capabilities. You can also ask questions okay what what about we roll and do the 2d10 here and uh, we get a 4 and a 3 that stands for valuable results so maybe he was counting some business that was over and the gangs are really not there and from there we can do whatever RPCs want because we're not telling a story RPCs are doing what they want maybe they punch him because they don't believe him maybe they believe him and ask them where and so on um, so I'm going to let that to you. Uh, for me, it works pretty well, of course, and I created it. I, I'm always refining it, but feedback is welcome. You can check out my blog, jvhouse.xyz, for actual plays. Um, I do 
so I write them and I write what I roll and so on. Uh, you can see my take on it, but it's quite open. So I hope that example was useful for you. Um, let's talk a bit about how can you play the plot on Foundry Machine. One way is Foundry. If you install Mythic GME Tools module, this one here, you will get this panel with Mythic rules, but if you click on this configure button, there's a plot on folding machine a panel and you're going to get this. And this includes everything I just showed. What's the prompt? When you click it, it's going to roll for you and give you the answer. And what's the circumstance of the scene? You can ask what is at risk um, and so on. So you can really get a lot of ideas for, for filling up your game. As you can saw in my example, I just made it up as I went and my game kept moving. Things are supposed to be fast and fun. Of course, you can take your time for things as much as you want, but Plot and Folding Machine will help you get unstuck. Another way of playing is through my Play by the Writing application. Uh, you can find it on HIO. It's a paid software that leverages a sponsor. What it allows you to do is let's assume you're working on some blog, right? And uh, you want to use the plot for the machine. What it allows you to do is call back those prompts and rules from the keyword. For example, is the old man awake? You write down colon Q and you're going to get the answer. Uh, okay, what happens when we open the door? We can put a prompt and it gets the prompt. Risk about to trigger, we are about to harm our relationship. Um, uh, we want to make a what question. What is going on right now? What? There's a personal encounter. As you can see, you can play very, very fast. Additionally, you can call back your random tables by pressing list. You're going to get um, a list of your random tables to call them. Um, you can also call the AI if you like the GPT. You're gonna get like a prompt and you say, okay, how do these sewers look like? And um, yeah, you're gonna call directly the famous chat GPT. You're gonna get the answer. So if you like this method, play by the writing or foundry. Additionally, before I let go, I want to thank the community because there are two current websites from which you can roll your plot and folding machine. And you can see this is one and this is another. They are amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, you can find them on my each page, plot and folding machine. It's also available on drive through RPG. So I don't want to make this video super long, but I hope it was useful. Um, I'm going to drop a note about the plot unfolding machine expansion. It's called scene unfolding machine. Why is it separate? Well, because you might or might not or might not want to use it together with the plot unfolding machine. It's an independent piece of work, another kind of GM emulation uh, that you can use with or without plot unfolding machine and exactly with the same method. So if you scroll down, you're gonna get the scene unfolding machines and foundry and play by the writing also support them. Just to mention it, what is it? Let's say it's a more advanced GM emulator. What does that mean? Well, it doesn't have rules really, but you can access to certain tables I refined that emulate GMs on a table. So this emulator is more if you will really like to emulate a group of people around your table or an actual GM in your solo games. What does that mean? Okay, let's say my characters enter the sewer, they talk to the old man and they leave after they are happy with what they found, which is the new location of the gangs, right? Okay, so I can ask, hey GM, what do you do? Do you do something else before I go to my next scene or not? And we can ask this GM emulation action. Let's take an example. It's a D100. We roll and we get 89, that stands for something breaks, fails, or gets harmed around here. Okay, this is very interesting. This means the GM is gonna take an action and actually harmed around here. We only saw the old man. Let's say someone showed up from behind and shoot the old man 
who was preparing a briefcase from behind. And we hear the fire, the shooting. Um, this is a, this is that. So I'm gonna leave it right there. You can play with that or not. But it's an amazing way. The GM can also remain silent at a time. Uh, and among that, you get also feedback. Like, let's say you take an action with your PCs and you want to see what the GM reacts. Uh, is there something you want to add? Is there any world building to do? The same for NPCs. Are, what do NPCs talk about? Let's roll another example. Third, uh, this is uh, 13. 13 is they ask about your concerns, ready to be of help. So this is more like, okay, we meet an NPC, what does he say or what does she say? How do they behave? What do What is their opinion about something? And last but not least, you get a 3D hundred tables for general inspiration. Um, so yes, plenty of here to explore, plenty of mechanics you can play around with. Um, so I hope you like the idea. Try it out, let me know how it goes. This is Jensen Vars. Take a look at my plus at my blog and uh, if you like subscribe let me know in your comments and uh, happy to hear your thoughts thank you and bye bye